What's up guys, Vinyl Syntax here, and I've made a video about this in the past, but it's been quite a while, so I thought I'd make an update on how to record PC gameplay the best way possible. Now there's two different routes you can take to record PC gameplay. The first one is a hardware-based solution, the second one is a software-based solution. The advantage of using a hardware-based solution is that you're going to have very little frame rate hit while you're recording. The disadvantage is that you're going to pay a lot more money than a software-based solution, and there's going to be screen tearing. Essentially what screen tearing is, horizontal tears in your video that occur when you're playing at a higher frame rate than what you're recording at. Now the advantage of a software-based solution is that you're going to be paying less, you don't have to worry about screen tearing if you're using the right uh, piece of software, and in some cases there's actually very little frame rate hit. So in this video I'm going to be talking about software-based solutions because in my eyes the issue of screen tearing for PC recording capture cards is such a problem that it's not even worth buying or spending you know, $100 or $200 on a uh, dedicated capture card. So we're going to be devoting this video to software-based solutions. So I've tried basically every possible recording solution that's uh, that's on the market. Everything from Action to Fraps, Bandicam, DX Tori, Playclaw, MSI Afterburner, and a bunch of other ones that basically if there's anything that's somewhat mainstream or somewhat well-known, I've probably tried it out, tried different codecs with it, and tried it on a bunch of different configurations. And from my experience, DX3 is by far the best. It is a little pricey. I'll put a link in the description to the place where you guys can download or purchase the software. Uh, I think it's around $50 or $60. And, uh, but it's totally worth it. In my eyes, if you're going to be recording gameplay and posting it to YouTube and you, uh, you want to be doing that on a regular basis, you know that money might be worth the investment. Because it's really not that much when you compare it to a hardware-based solution like an Avermedia capture card or an Elgato capture card or Roxy. There's a bunch of different options for hardware-based solutions. So the reason that DX Story is the best option in my eyes is because it's very high-quality video output. There's a lot of different functionality and a lot of different flexibility as far as what codecs you use for both your video and audio recordings. It's very stable and it's uh, just awesome all around. It's by far probably the most customizable one and gives you the most options. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up DX Tori in my eyes the best way possible and give you guys a couple different suggestions depending on what system you're using. So we're gonna be first looking at the uh, the target tab in DX Tori, which is the, the farthest left tab. So essentially what the target tab is gonna show you what applications or 3D programs like games your DX story has detected and it's ready to record. You also have an ignore list, so if there's a program that you want to completely ignore, uh, then it'll be listed here. You can add things to the ignore list by going into your profile list uh, settings. But for the most part, you want this list to be empty because if you accidentally have you know Battlefield on 3 on your record list, then every time you try and record Battlefield 3, it's not going to work. So make sure this list is empty, unless for some specific reason you want it to be, uh, you know, populated. So next is the overlay settings. Essentially just leave this all default. It's it's great how it is. You can change around with the colors if you want for when you're recording or not recording. Next one is the folder settings. This is actually where you're going to record your footage and audio from your games. Now I would suggest using an external or not an external hard drive, an internal hard drive is USB uh, is typically very slow connection unless you have a USB 3 drive or a Thunderbolt drive. But typically you want a, a extra a secondary or third if you have you know more hard drives in your computer but you want to re be recording to a hard drive that you're not playing off of so you typically want a dedicated recording hard drive is what I would suggest and typically if you're gonna go for that you want to go for an internal hard drive as a, a SATA interface is gonna be much faster than going over USB 2 and actually in some cases you can buy an, an external hard drive and just take it out of its chassis throw it in your case hook it up through SATA and that's what I've done in a couple cases and you can actually get some really good prices on external drives but enough about that what you need to do here is you'll probably have an empty list so go ahead and press the add button locate the location where you want to record your gameplay so I have a dedicated 500 gig hard drive and you're gonna go ahead and press this benchmark button and press run it's gonna give you a estimate of how fast your hard drive can write, uh, write to uh, you don't really have to worry about read speeds, obviously, because we're just writing a file with uh, recording. Now, I'm not going to do this because I am writing to this hard drive as we speak with the recording I'm, I'm, uh, recording program I'm using to record my screen. But in most cases, my uh, my drive performs around 100 megabytes per second. In most cases, you're going to want at least 50 megabits per second if you're recording at 720p, probably at least 80 megabits per second if you're recording a, at uh, 1080p. And it also depends on which codec you're using. It's really important. So then you've also got your screenshots location. You can go ahead and choose where you want screenshots to be saved. Moving on to the next tab, we've got your hotkey settings. Just set this up to whatever keys you want for starting and stopping your recording and taking screenshots. 
And then here is the meat of the program. This is the video recording settings or the codec settings for recording videos. So codec, by default, you're gonna be stuck with the DX3 video codec. This is a great option. Make sure you click the pen option and go to low quality because true quality or even medium quality or high quality is way more color depth uh, and bit rate than you're ever gonna see on YouTube. So there's no point in wasting your hard drive space uh, and wasting you know, read, read or write speeds with an incredibly high quality format that if it's gonna be uploaded to YouTube, it's gonna be compressed the shit out of anyway. So uh, definitely suggest using low quality. Use compression at your own risk though because some programs have issues with it. Maybe try it with it on and then if it, you have issues with Sony Vegas or uh, Premiere or whatever editing program you're using, turn it off. But I would suggest even better than DX Story Video Codec is the uh, Lagarith Lossless Codec. I'll put a link in the description where you can download it. It's a really easy install. You just download an EXE file, you launch it and it installs. You just relaunch DX Story and it'll show up in your codec list. This thing is awesome. So go ahead and click the pen options. And if you have a multi-threaded uh, or a hyper-threaded CPU, an i7 uh, from Intel or something like that, then make sure you have a use uh, multi-threading. And then for mode, you also wanna set this to the lowest setting, which is YV12, go ahead and press okay. This is a great codec. If you're going for uh, high quality videos that don't have a hit on frame rate, so you can play at a very high frame rate and when you're recording, it doesn't drop that much. I would say it drops for me maybe five frame, frames per second while I'm recording at 720p, maybe even at 1080p. Now the issue comes into place is if you don't have a lot of hard drive space, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to go with a compressed codec because a la the Lagarth lossless codec and the DX Story uh, codec are both very large file sizes. We're talking at least a gig per minute depending on what frame rate uh, you're using and what, uh, what, what uh, uh, resolution you're using. But uh, if you want, if you have a very small hard drive space, you don't have a lot of space on your hard drive, then what you have to do is go with a compressed codec. And I would recommend either the uh, X264 codec or the XVID codec. I'll put a link in the description to both of those. The problem with these compressed codecs is while you're recording your gameplay, you're gonna have to be compressing that video on the fly. Therefore, your CPU is doing more processing while you're trying to play your game and therefore your frame rate's gonna drop. So. You know, if you don't have the hard drive space, then maybe consider using one of those codecs or maybe consider buying a secondary hard drive. That way you can use one of these, uh, you know, lower frame rate hit um, codecs that don't do as much compressing. Um, that way, you know, you, you, you can have a higher frame rate while you're playing your games. Okay, so for file output or for frame rate, make sure you have it at 30. There's no point in recording at 29.97. You, YouTube does re, uh, support a full 30 frames per second. And uh, you want file output, if you're gonna be doing live streaming with something like XSplit, then you're gonna use direct show output, but we're not gonna get into that in this video. For file format, you want AVI, raw caps for doing a simulated RAID uh, recording, but I'm not gonna talk about that in this video, it's a little bit too advanced. Um, include mouse cursor, I've had issues with this. This will like show your, your mouse cursor in game, but I've had issues where in Battlefield, those show my mouse cursor even if I'm not in a menu, so I'm just you know walking around with my gun out and there's a cursor in the middle of your screen. So I would suggest disabling that. You don't want synchronized FPS. And then for scaling, let's say you want to record at 1080p and you're playing at 1080p, then just set it up to 100%. If you're recording at 1080p but you want to record 720p, then just hit the size tab and type in whatever resolution you want. That's one of the awesome aspects of DX Tori is that you don't have to record at you know full frame size or half frame size like you have in Fraps. You actually can choose exactly what frame size you want to record at. Moving on to the next tab, audio recording. So you can have up to like nine, eight or nine devices. I would say set up in the most device possible. So essentially what I have here is my optical output that goes to my mix amp for my Astro A40s. That's where I send my game sound. The next is my USB for that same device, the Astro mix amp. This is where I send any voices. So say for example, Skype, Mumble, TeamSpeak. And then the third audio recording device is my Astro A40 microphone. I can also add my Blue Yeti microphone onto this. Essentially what you wanna do is have as many tracks as you possibly can. That way you can control the volumes individually while you're in an editing program. So say for example, I record a match of uh, a Battlefield where it has game sound, it has mumble, me and a couple guys talking, and it has my voice recorded onto a separate track. That way, if the game audio is too loud in the recording, I can turn the game audio down. If the uh, people on mumble are too quiet, I can turn them up. If my microphone's too quiet, I can turn my, mine up. It allows you to balance the volumes you know, very easily. As far as audio format, you wanna use PCM. Lame MP3 is another one I would suggest if you're going for a compressed codec, but honestly, audio, 
does not take up very much bandwidth, doesn't take up very much file size, especially when compared to video. So PCM codecs a much better uncompressed codec. And uh, for for what uh, hertz you want, you want to use 44 kilohertz because YouTube does not support anything higher. So there's no point in re recording at 48 kilohertz and 16-bit stereo. So record at 44 kilohertz, 16-bit on all three of those devices. I think by default it's going to be at 48, but uh, YouTube doesn't support that. So there's no point in having that set up. All right, moving on to screenshots. This is going to set up however you want. Uh, file format, I would suggest PNG or JPEG. You can set up the scaling or the quality. It's kind of up to you. Moving on to advanced. So this is actually a cool option down here at the bottom, which is limit video frame rate. So essentially, if you're playing without VSync and you want your frame rate to be above, let's say for example, 60, but you don't want it to go up to 200 because your your monitor is only a 60 hertz monitor. Well, you can la uh, cap your frame rate at say 60 FPS or 65 FPS. That way, you're not wasting your GPU horsepower. You know, outputting more heat, uh, using more electricity. Uh, to you know, produce frames that you're not even going to see with that low of a hertz monitor. Uh, so for me, I set that to 135. That way, my frame rate never goes over 135. For processing threads, if you do have a i7 with hyperthreading, go ahead and set that up to eight. If you're using an i5 or anything lower, then just set to you know, whatever, however many cores your CPU has or how many threads your CPU has. For delay hook, I found that this can help with certain uh, other overlays, like if you're using the MSI Afterburner overlay, or if you're using Mumble overlay, or TeamSpeak overlay, or even like the Steam overlay or, or Origin overlay. If you enable the delay hook, it'll it'll wait for those programs to hook first, and then it will DxTory will go ahead and uh, hook onto your 3D application. So that might help you out. If you do have a multi GPU set up with SLI um, or Crossfire, then go ahead and enable GPU fix code. I've tried out basically all these other settings and I think uh, they're not really worth enabling. So just go ahead and set it up that way. And uh, that's about it for for these settings. Yep. So that summarizes how to set up DxTory um, with uh, with the Lagerith lossless codec and the DxTory codec, which in my opinion are the two best options. I always use the Lagerith lossless codec, but if you have issues with that, you might want to use the DxTory codec. And once again, if you were going to go for a compressed codec because you don't have hard drive space, then try out the X.264 codec. And the and I'll put a link to, the, to all of these codecs in, in the description so you guys can find it really easily. And the XVID codec. Uh, I might do videos about those, but if you have any troubles setting those up, I have quite a bit of experience with all of those codecs. So let me know in the comments down below if you guys need help with those codecs or anything else uh, to record with. Um, a couple other things I want to mention is DxTory does not support recording your desktop. So if you want to record, you know, your, your, you want to do some type of screencast, I would suggest either using Fraps if you're on Windows 7. The problem is Windows it, Fraps does not support Windows 8 at this, at this time. So I would suggest checking out Action. I'll put a link in the description as well. That's what I use personally for recording my desktop. It can record games and stuff like that, but I don't think it performs quite as well as, uh, as DxTory. But yeah, I think that summarizes everything I wanted to talk about. I might do another update once uh, another better recording solution comes out onto the market. But uh, hopefully this was helpful for some people that want to get into PC gaming and record their, their gameplay. Uh, and if it did, if it did help you out, feel free to let me know in the comments down below or give me a like or thumbs up or whatever, whatever it's called. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.